What's up guys, it's your cousin Richie and I'm back with another video to help you learn real estate and stock trading better. And most importantly, today's topic is something we're all going through, which is the coronavirus pandemic. And everybody's talking about how today, right now, is not the right time to be investing. I think they're absolutely wrong, but I wanna know what you think. Before we go into this video and really dig deeper, Go ahead, take a quick second, comment below, and just let me know before you watch the rest of the vid, what do you think? Should you be buying real estate right now? Yes or no, and why? I'll go down below and I'll answer the comments as they come in. Also remember, please like and subscribe on this channel so you can keep on getting this information as it comes in in real time. All right guys, so everybody is freaking out about investing in today's market because of this coronavirus pandemic. I think those people are absolutely wrong because back in 2008, I invested and look where I'm at today. I was able to build a portfolio off of only one property and that scaled up to five, six properties just off that one. And then from there, cash out refinancing to scale as well. Huge opportunity that I would have missed if I didn't invest at the time that I invested in. And that was back in the last recession. So this recession should be no different. All right, so going deeper, most people are going to be telling you not to invest in real estate right now because they think the market's going to crash. Now, we couldn't be further away from that truth because this is not a financial crisis. This is a health healthcare crisis, right? So what you have to understand is that because it's a healthcare crisis, we have plenty of money to inject into the market. That's why we have trillions of dollars being injected into our economy. And that's why the economy is still very damn strong because it's like all these trillions of dollars are getting printed to buy corporate debt, mortgage-backed securities, and really prop up the market during the time that the market is and should be coming lower. Real estate doesn't really depend, good deals don't depend so much on the market conditions, they really depend on the numbers. And if you're a good investor, then you run the numbers. And I'm gonna break down some of those numbers and what they are in this video as well. One thing you have to understand is that at this time, interest rates have drastically fallen. That reduces the cost monthly of your property, yearly of your property, and also throughout the entire term. So if you spent one or 2% less in interest, over the course of your, let's say 30 year mortgage, you saved an average of maybe two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in interest payments that just a month or two ago you would have been making to the bank. You no longer have to do that anymore. I think that right there in and of itself is significant because if you're running the expense variables like I told you before and you're number crunching on your deal, what you're looking for is a lower cost and higher revenue, right? That's what you're looking for, which is called NOI right? Net operating income. What you're doing is when you buy a property, you're lowering your cost, but you're increasing your revenue, meaning you improve the structure, of the, you improve the property, you gave value to the property, and now you can produce better rents. Also, you lowered your cost because since you improved the property, you lowered the maintenance. But because you're buying in this market with low interest rates, you are also buying something that has a lower cost per month. Huge. That doesn't necessarily mean that it has a lower cost to acquire, but it does have a lower cost per month. And that's something that's really, really important. I'd rather pay more cash to buy the property because the price is higher than pay more money for 30 years in interest to the bank. I'd rather put money in my pocket than put money in the bank's pocket. That's the way that I see it. So buying right now becomes significantly cheaper over the next 10, 15 years because interest rates are likely to rise. They're not gonna go lower than what they are right now. They're gonna go much higher. So if you're gonna capitalize on an opportunity and you're running the expense variables, you're running the numbers, then the numbers have to coincide with the deal, with the market, with the interest rates, with the taxes, with the insurance. All of this has to coincide when you run the numbers on that property. And if the deal makes sense, then it doesn't matter whether the market is softer or it's stronger. If it's a deal, then it's a deal. Da, 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 da. And you should be jumping on that deal. So most of you are probably thinking about what's the solution? How do you find a good deal? Well, the way I find good deals, simply put, is I look for off markets and I look for multifamily. Multifamily off-market deals are the best way to go. If you go with a condo, you go with a townhome, you go with anything that is attached or inside of a community, 
that has a homeowner's association fee, you're essentially paying more for something that you don't really have to pay for, right? So you don't wanna be paying the association to just own your property. That means you technically never own it yourself. The association technically owns your property because if you stop paying your association, you can go into default. So I don't want that. I also don't wanna be connected to other properties like townhomes and, and condos are. I don't wanna be connected in that fashion because then it's all relevant. My value in that property is relevant on all the other properties in that same building and the vacancy rate of that building as well. I don't wanna be attached. What I do want is a detached property that is a multifamily, meaning that it has multiple doors or that you can create multiple doors on the property because it's already zoned multifamily usage. But maybe it's only being used as a single family home right now. That was my first property. My first property I bought was back in the last recession. It was a 2010 acquisition that I made and it was $150,000 uh, purchase price. I put about $50,000 of work into it. After all of that, today it's a $700,000 property. I've taken a cash out refinance, used that money to then go buy more properties. That's the power right there. I just wanted to show you. But more importantly, it was a multifamily conversion. I bought a single family home. That house only one person was living in, but it was a seven bedroom and it was zoned triplex. So I was like, hey, you know what? If I buy this as a single family, I'm paying the price as if it is a single family home. But I can now, after buying it, convert it into a triplex or a duplex, and I can make it value add. I can make it much more valuable, meaning I just forced depreciation in the property. And not only did I do that, but I also have created multiple doors structuring my risk. So now I have three different tenants paying me checks every month versus one person paying me checks every month. That eliminates a lot of my risk on just having one check per month. Now I got three, all right? and so. This was my first deal. And I learned all of this really and truly because I stumbled across the strategy. You know, I, I, I started recognizing that buying a deal that was single family, that I can convert into multifamily, uh, was something that not everybody was doing. But if I did it, and since I had done it, I was able to acquire less risk, a better deal, and more value add, giving me more money, both in appreciation and in cash flow can't ask for anything else. And if you're right now looking for a deal, that's the type of deal you should be looking for. And the conclusion here is, look, if you're gonna do your assessment on a deal, don't use articles that are online that are written by some random person, never even been in real estate, never, probably isn't even an investor to begin with. All these scare tactics that you see all these different news agencies put out there like, oh, you shouldn't be buying here, but hey, all of a sudden you should be buying here, but then, oh, this is the worst place to invest, but this is the best place, run the numbers. Forget about all the noise, run the numbers. Make sure that the numbers you run are correct and that they they work for you. You know, I have somebody today that's like, they have a 20% deal and they're afraid to close on that deal because of the coronavirus. And they're like, maybe in six months, things are gonna change. I'm like, but how do the numbers work on this deal right now? Do you feel comfortable with the interest rate? Do you feel comfortable with the expense cost? Do you feel comfortable with the purchase price? All these things make you feel comfortable. Do you, do you feel comfortable in the end with the return that you're gonna make on your investment? If all of that feels comfortable to you, if you're making a 1% return on your money, if you are uh, feeling comfortable about the investment that you have to put in upfront, which is let's say you know 20%, 25% down, and you don't have to do a lot in order to make that money in a bad market, I don't see why you would say no to that. But if you get scared, you use emotion, you tie in fear or doubt into the decision making, especially during a time like this, you're not gonna buy good deals. You're not gonna buy any deals at all. And you're gonna look back in two or three years and you're gonna say, damn, I lost the opportunity to buy in 2008. That was really cheap. Damn, I lost the second wave in 2020 when it was again kind of stalled and cheap and inter interest rates dropped dramatically. And now it's five years later, interest rates have risen, prices have risen, and you're sitting again saying, man, I had two missed opportunities. I repeated my mistakes and I should have listened and I should have bought in. When everybody was saying no, I should have said yes. Hey guys, again, take a quick second. If you enjoyed this video and you were able to learn something new, smash the like button or the subscribe button or both and 
make sure you leave a comment below so I can help you with any of your investment questions that you have. I wanna make sure that you invest the right way and now is the right time to make that happen. All right, your cousin Richie's out, I'll see you soon. Oh, 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 and by the way, don't forget to comment below the word wisdom if you want me to send you a message directly and we can get a conversation started about maybe my first investment, your first investment, maybe trading uh, stocks in real time, whatever it can be to help you out, go ahead and comment wisdom below and I'll help answer it for you. All right, see you guys.